Hey, my name is Caleb Crabtree, and I'm so glad that you decided to click on this video. This is a message from our youth group this past Sunday night that we call Grace Student Night. I pray that God uses it specifically in your life to touch your heart and uh, to move you forward in faith. So enjoy it. In life, we will meet resistance, which can leave us feeling worn down and worn out. But we can find a reason to keep going. Show up, push through, and never give up. Resilience, never giving up. What is the definition of resilience? So I wrote this out this week. Actually, I didn't. It came with the paper here, but I like this. Resilience is our ability to find a reason to keep moving forward and grow stronger after we have struggled, failed, or faced hard stuff. Okay? It's our... I underlined some words here, and I'm going to have to put the, the old man glasses on. Our ability to find... These were the words I underlined. Ability, find, keep moving forward, stronger, after, struggled, failed, or face hard stuff in our life. Those are the words I, that were key to me in this. And when we're going through this series tonight, we're going to be looking at not giving up on God. And unfortunately, things happen in our lives and make it difficult. I'm just going to read a little thing that they have here in the notes here. It says, Isn't it true that facing trouble in life can make us question everything we believe about God? We may, we may wonder if God is really who people say God is. Is God really good to me if my family is still broke up? Is God really loving if I still struggle with depression? Is God really worth following when it doesn't seem like God shows up when we're in real need? Tonight, we're going to take probably, I'm not going to be 30 minutes or anything like that. I'm going to share from my heart tonight. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to be talking about is not going to be in these notes. But from what I've seen and experienced in my own life, you see... As we walk in our Christian life, how many here can say, I've made a mistake. My hand's going to be up there right with you. We fall, we fail, and sometimes, your hands can go down, sometimes we feel like we want to give up on God. And why is that? You see, what happens is we get into the situation and we tend to judge ourselves the same way man will judge himself. And we'll think, well, how kind of God love me if I just did this? You see, we think that God's going to be unfair or mean or nasty. And it's not that case here. And we're going to go on here. We also get in the situation, how many have ever been caught in a sin and got embarrassed by it? Poof. Been there, done that too. Wore that t-shirt many times. We get embarrassed. So what do we do when that happens? We begin to fall back. We don't go to church. We don't show our face in youth group or whatever. And you see, all those things that we do is a, is a lie. And we're going to get around to that here pretty quick. But I want to go back into what um, God says to us. You know, we think God is going to, to judge us based on the way man judges each other. We judge ourselves the hardest. But in Hosea chapter 11, verse 9, I'm going to bring it up here on my phone. Listen to the words that God say through the prophet Hosea. He says, I will not carry out my fierce anger. Now, he's talking to uh, countries here. 
He says, I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Ephraim again, for I am God and not a man. See, God doesn't look at us the same way we look at ourselves. If you've been tracking along with the services up front with Pastor Roy, you see that God is a gentle and kind God. And he loves us. And as we go into this section here for tonight about not giving up on God, there's one key verse, and that's John 16.33. And we're going to just look at the first half of that verse right now. Maybe. Ah, there we go. See, Jesus is preaching and talking, and he's, he's talking to the believers right now, or the disciples. He says, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace, but, listen to his words, in this world you will have trouble. Just because you're a Christian does not mean you will have the easy life. It will be difficult, and it will be easier for us to want to give up on God. We think about, as I think about these things, I think about other characters in the Bible who could have easily given up. Last week, Caleb talked about Paul, and actually I had this written down already. So if we could bring up what Paul went through in uh, 2 Corinthians here. Listen, this is Paul the disciple. He, he wrote almost the whole New Testament. He says, I have been put in prison more often. I have been whipped, and whipped many times without number and faced death again and again. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me the 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole day and night adrift at sea. I have traveled on many long journeys. I have faced danger from rivers and from robbers. I have faced danger from my own people, the Jews, as well from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on seas. And I have faced danger from men who claim to be believers but are not. I have worked hard and long, enduring many sleepless nights. I have been hungry, thirsty, and have often gone without food. I have, shriveled in, I have shivered in the cold without enough clothing to keep me warm. How many people here might give up on a thing that God has assigned them to the first time you're thrown into prison? I'm going to be honest. <laughs> you might not have ever made it to the next thing. How many people here go on after they've been whipped? <laughs> you know, it had been easy for Paul to throw in the towel and say, hey, I'm not taking God's word anywhere further. But he had a calling on his life, and he kept on going. I also think about Noah. Noah was told by God to build a boat, a square boat, needless to say, because the rain was coming. But guess what? At that time, nobody knew what rain was. <laughs> Noah spent 120 years, I believe, building this boat. You know how much he... How many people had to pick on him, tease on him? It's been easy to give up. I think of Abraham and Sarah, who God promised to give them a son that was going to create multiple nations. How long did Sarah have to wait before she had a baby? How old was she? She was in her 90s. I think Abraham was 99, Sarah was probably 98, 97, somewhere in that area doesn't matter, in her 90s, before God fulfilled the promise. They actually almost did give up. She told them to, have, to be with their housemaid. I think of the children of Israel when they were at the wall of Jericho. Here they're facing a giant wall. God has promised them that they would go on to the other side. But what was the conditions that God said? He goes, once a day, you're going to march around that wall and not say a word. 
And thank goodness it wasn't this group in charge because I don't know if we'd ever gone one day without saying a word. <laughs> we might have to fire Matt. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good, Matthew. Shh. Then show me. Anyways, they told the march, march around the wall seven days in a row, and on the seventh day, to march around seven times and then blow the horns and scream and yell and the walls would fall down. Let's be honest. How many make it past the third day? <laughs> day four? Day five? Uh, do I have to do this again? <laughs> day, day, day seven? March around seven times and make as much noise as you can. I might have been there for that party. But I might have been wanting to quit around day three, day four. I think about Elijah. If you go to 1 Kings chapter 19, he just did, on God's command, killed a bunch of people. And the wicked queen Jezebel says, I'm going to have your head. He took off in fear. He ran to the mountain. He actually had a conversation with God up there. And during that time that he was up there with God, God said, go to the mountain and see where I'm at. How many remember this story? First, there came a great wind. That wasn't God. Then the fire. Well, that wasn't God. But then came a small, tiny whisper. And that was God. You see, God cares about us. He's just that comforting to us. He gives us things that, you know, he, he gives us tasks. He gives us things to do. And sometimes they're easy and sometimes they're not. But sometimes we're going to feel like we want to give up. I think of Daniel. Spent a day in the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Faced a fiery furnace. I think about David. David was known... If you go into the scriptures and read it, you will see that God, David was known as a man after God's own heart. That's why God anointed him to be the king of Israel. And to this day, David's star is still their symbol. But David didn't always have it easy. He had a king there before him. His name was Saul. And Saul literally tried to pin him to the wall. David wrote one of the psalms here. We're going to take a look at it. But I'm going to guarantee you're going to have felt like David did sometime in, when you look at this psalm. Psalm 13. We're going to look at verses 1 and 2 here real quick. It's psalm 13 is six verses. Verse 1 and 2. David says, How long, Lord, will you forget me? How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? When David wrote this psalm. He was on the run. And he knew he was supposed to be the next king. At this point in David's life, or the first two verses here, we can actually see David feels like, God, are you there? And as we're, we're journeying along in our Christian life, we're going to have those moments of going, God, are you there? Are you really hearing me? Just like anybody else, David wants answers. Let's look at verses 3 and 4. Look on me and answer my God. Give, give light to my eyes, or will I sleep in death? And my enemy will say, I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. David's looking for answers from God. And as you're going through your life, let me just tell you, you will spend time wanting to look for answers. Finally, we're going to come back to verse 5 and 6 real quick because I actually thought about something I forgot. Noah, Abraham, Elijah, or not Elijah. These people that I've noticed here, 
are all written in Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 is also known as the book of faith, okay? With resilience comes, is where you're going to, to, stronger resilience comes within your faith, okay? And before I go on and carry on any further, what I want to say is when our straight faith is greater, it is easier for us to latch on and hold on to God. But I also want to point out there are faith suckers out there or things that deplete your faith. What are they? There's, there are those sins that we don't want to deal with in our lives. Maybe something we should be doing or we shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing. They're faith suckers. They begin to deplete you. What happens is, is your eyes turn from the focus. David regained his focus, and we're going to go to verses 5 and 6 here. He says, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. David didn't get his answers right away, but he knew in his heart that God was going to give him the answers that he was looking for. He knew the rest of John 16.33. He knew it before it came, before Jesus even said those words. Says, Look at these words. Let's go back to John 16.33. He says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Take heart, I have overcome the world. And hold on, there's a, there we go. I want to just read something that they have here real quick. There's no other way to think about this. That helps us remember that in our dark and difficult days, we, we have the final third. Let me show you. Oh, this is not where I want to be. I'm sorry. I won't forget about it. Jesus says, take heart, for I've overcome the world. What that means is plain and simple. You win. You've won. You're my believer. You're my son in Christ. Take heart, for I have overcome the world. We win. You see, there's only two types of people that can be here today. There's only going to be two types. There will be winners, and there will be losers. There's heaven, or there's hell. And Jesus says, even though you're gone through all these hard times, even though you're ready to give up, he says, take heart, for I have overcome the world. He's already won. Now, I know this was going to be, this, I knew this was going to be a fast message going on, but this is the seriousness of the message. You have to choose. You get to choose. If we were to divide up into teams, and I could say to you, this team's always going to win, how many of us are always going to want to be on this team? We want to be on the team, the winning team all the time. But we get the choice, and the choice is yours. And Jesus says, I have overcome the world. You get to choose what side of the team, which side you want to be on. All right. I'm just going to wrap up in a word of prayer. But I just want every head bowed, every eye closed here. And I want to talk to, I want to talk to the, everybody here. And if you don't know, my voice here, what side you've, 
you would be on. If you would be on the winning side, please, every head bowed, eyes closed. Thank you. If you don't know within a shadow of a doubt that heaven's your home, I want to give you this opportunity. And all you have to do is just say a prayer of faith. And if you don't know, you can just say the simple prayer after me. Dear God, I believe that you sent your son Jesus to come to die on the cross to save me from my sin. I believe that he rose from the grave and that he's coming again. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed the message. I hope that God used it specifically in your life. Uh, regardless of what you're going through, I, I pray that he used it in your life. We would love for you to join us in person at Grace Student Night, Sunday nights from 6 to 9 p.m. See ya.